So there's this big gap between what the media thinks of Cam and what the NFL and the betting markets think of Cam. And I saw a story this morning where, uh, by a nice young man, uh, Mike Reese, says Cam Newton joining the Patriots has similarities to Randy Moss in 07. <laughs> okay, slow, 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 slow down. The media has hailed this a success. He has not a practice yet. And oh, by the way, I'm reading this morning that we'd have no OTAs, and now the preseason's down to two games, and it may get eliminated. So Cam Newton in New England, no preseason, no OTAs, never taking a snap. Go ahead and play against an improving division. That's Randy Moss. Randy Moss was still in his prime. Randy Moss did not have a litany of injuries. Randy Moss, his talent had been buried by the incredibly poorly run Raiders. Cam Newton's not in his prime. Cam Newton's had injuries. Cam Newton wasn't buried in Carolina. It was at least a reasonably well-run organization. Randy Moss is the greatest wide receiver talent of his lifetime. Jerry Rice had better numbers. Randy Moss, the most talented receiver in NFL history. Cam Newton wasn't the most talented quarterback in his division. That was Drew Brees. <laughs> Let's slow down. But I do understand this, is that the media likes stories. Cam's always been a good story. And the media likes style. NFL executives don't care about style. They care about production. I'll give you a prime example. The last two years, these are Kirk Cousins' numbers. Now, Kirk Cousins has no style. He, made, he makes Pete Rose look fashionable. These are the last two years of Kirk Cousins. 56 touchdowns, 16 picks, 8,000 yards, 69% completion percentage, 103 passer rating. Those are big boy, pro bowl numbers. You can't find me an article on Kirk Cousins. You can't find me anybody who fights for Kirk Cousins, who's got Kirk Cousins back, who's leading the way for Kirk Cousins. Cam Newton's never had back-to-back -back years with those numbers. Not even close. Not even close. But Cam's got style. And style matters to the media much more than it matters to the NFL. A prime example is the Instagram accounts. Cam Newton's got almost 5 million people on Instagram. He's very active. He's very opinionated. He's got all these, the way he does the lettering on Instagram, it's kind of cool. Kirk Cousins has like 350,000 people that follow him on Instagram. Today, Kirk Cousins has a picture of a rainbow on it. So, Kirk Cousins, it's painful. Look, there's Kirk Cousins' Instagram. It's got a rainbow. Hey, everybody, dude, the sky gave me a rainbow. He's got no style. He's just really good. On Cam Newton's Instagram this morning, the world's talking about it. Cam is all full of Cam. We got, we got a little... There's no rainbow on Cam. Cam's got style on his Instagram this morning. Cam's got opinions and style. Let's go back to Kirk Cousins' Instagram today. It's a rainbow! Over trees! Kirk Cousins has no style. But his numbers the last two years are profound. Cam Noon's beat up. There's no OTAs. Preseason got cut in half. There's another quarterback that's taking all the snaps. I don't have New England's playbook, but I would imagine it's fairly complicated because everything Belichick does is complicated. There's a real chance Cam won't even start the season, may not start September. There is a massive gap between media and reality on Cam, and I think a lot of it is the media likes style. We like narratives. We like stories. We don't like rainbows. We just were not into rainbows. So David Njoku's a, a very talented tight end for the Browns. Now he's, he struggles to stay healthy. So now he's unhappy in Cleveland and not entirely healthy. That's kind of been his reputation, that he just can't stay healthy. And in the NFL, if you're not healthy early in your career, you're generally not going to be healthy in the prime or late of your career. It's a little bit the OBJ thing. OBJ gets hurt. Uh, he's, he's not a stocky wide receiver. He's not Calvin Johnson or Larry Fitzgerald. OBJ gets hurt. David Njoku, though, it's interesting because Njoku is basically saying, and I, and I agree with him, I'm not going to get any touches here. I totally agree with David Njoku. This is why I worry about Cleveland when they started stacking all-star on top of all-star offensively. Here's the problem. Jarvis Landry, big money. OBJ, big money. Austin Hooper, big money. 
What does that mean? Players that make big money in the NFL offensively, they want production because if they don't get it, they'll get ripped for being a bust or you overpaid for him. So when you pay, it's different for a draft pick. You draft a kid, six round, he becomes part of your franchise. He's been, he, he's entered it as a nobody. Now he's a somebody. Free agents come in and they want the ball. Be very careful about building an offense through free agency. And they brought in a big free agent right tackle. And Jarvis Landry, and OBJ, and Austin Hooper. And they want mouse to feed. And remember, Kevin Stefanski, first of all, Cleveland's going to be a lot better this year. They're not going to trail in 12 games like last year. They lost to the Bengals last year. They're probably going to trail in six or seven games. Translation, they're going to run the football more. They're not going to be trailing. Baker Mayfield averaged 33 and a half throws last year per game. That's going to come way down. Part of it is they're going to be leading. They don't need to throw. Stefanski is a run-first guy who now has an offense, if you look at the O-line, that is going to lead. They're not going to trail in as many games. And I would say Baker Mayfield's throws will go down to 27 a game, uh, not 33. Now, that may only seem like five or six throws. But when you added a tight end, when you have a, a new coach and a new system, he doesn't want Baker to dominate this organization. We've seen what happens when you put it on Baker's back. He's not good enough physically. He's not mature enough mentally. So to me, and Joku was saying, and this is the danger of creating an all-star team on offense through free agency. David and Joku was like, hey, where are my catches? If there's going to be 27 pass attempts, let's say we complete 19. Well, Jarvis and OBJ are getting a bunch of those. We're going to throw Austin Hooper's a volume tight end. He's going to get six of those. So I don't blame David and Joku. He's just looking at it. He's going, listen, I got. I can't stay healthy. I got about four years. I got to make money. I want pass attempts. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.